Mindfulness is really the experience of going inside of yourself and studying what is happening from an internal place. And it comes with being non-judgmental and having no expectations. This is the Man Up Podcast, the doctor's guide to men's health. Each week on our podcast, we interview the top specialists of the field on various topics of men's health. You have questions that you are too afraid to ask. We have the answers. This week, our episode is titled Sex and Mindfulness, Using Your Mind to be Sexually Primed. I'm Dr. Kevin Chu, and I'm joined as always with my co-host, Dr. Justin Dubin. Justin, where'd your shirt go, brother? Uh, I'm in the Keys, man. I'm living my best life oh. here. I took a day off. I'm doing a long weekend in the Florida Keys. If you're uh, looking at the YouTube, you can see behind me, it's beautiful out. Just uh, sitting by the water, got a beer in hand. Yes, for, 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 for our listeners who are only listening, Justin is currently shirtless, and, <laughs> you know, holding, holding a beverage, but he's looking like he's having a great time. So, you know, hey, man, that's all we're, that matters. We're recording this on Friday. I'm having a good time. Uh, you know, took a day. <laughs> if you haven't been to the Keys, Kevin has been to the Keys. It's a wonderful Keys place. Keys are awesome. Keys great awesome. place. Really wonderful place to just kind of tune out, and that's what I'm planning on doing as soon as we finish recording this. You're Absolutely. in the office, well, let's, let's get to and it. you're in the office, yeah. though, right? <laughs> um, it's another work day for me. I, you know, I'm not. I'm, my Stalker. life is not like yours, Justin. Unfortunately. Stalker, man. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's get to it. So you can get to the keys, man. So look, we had a great episode. We actually had someone uh, on Keely Rankin. Uh, she is a sex and relationship coach uh, based in San Francisco. Uh, She has her master's degree in counseling psychology with a focus on marriage and family therapy. She's a co-creator of the Innovative Group Workshop Series, Sex as Meditation, uh, which integrates mindfulness and sex. So we had a great conversation on all things mindfulness and sex, right, Justin? Oh, this was actually a really wonderful episode. Uh, I I was listening back to some of the clips yesterday, and, you know, Keely is a very calming voice, a voice of reason, and the mindfulness with the way that she speaks, the way she delivers her message is so in sync. And and we both said it, I think, multiple times during this episode. It really feels like you're, it, it almost feels like we're going to be in an hour of just Zen, of like meditation yeah. as we're, we're going through our thoughts. But it was a, it was thought provoking and really makes you look introspectively. And so it was a fantastic episode. Yeah, I I think the thing that we always struggle with is uh, a lot of men in society in general, we're always on to the next thing. We're on to the next thing. We can't be in the moment. And especially when it comes to sex and being with our partners and and any kind of relationship, you really have to be present to be successful. And when we're talking about sex, I mean, that's definitely one of those things where if you're somewhere else, if you're not feeling it, you're really not going to succeed. And I think a lot of men struggle with that. A lot of guys that we see for ED, younger men, you know, we're so focused on ourselves. We're so focused in performing that we, we lose that moment. And that's really what's going to be the problem for a lot of people. That's very well said. And I think we can kind of jump into the episode because I want you to be present in the keys, my brother. All right. Oh, I am very present. So I'm going to enjoy the keys. Uh, <laughs> okay. Enjoy the episode, right. guys. So we are very fortunate to be joined by Keely Rankin to talk about something that Justin and I find really important, mindfulness and sexuality. So Keely, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. And, you know, I want to start off with the first question, just, you know, can you explain what mindfulness is and how it relates to a sexual experience? Yes, absolutely. And I am delighted to be here with you and your listeners as well. So thank you for having me. Um, So mindfulness is really the experience of going inside of yourself and studying what is happening from an internal place. And it comes with being non-judgmental and having no expectations. So when we think about how this applies to our erotic worlds, I sort of think of it as like, once you figure out what you're doing, like once you know, like, how to suck a cock or like how to get your cock inside someone. Obviously your listeners are probably not sucking cocks, but you know, how to eat a pussy. We'll go with that one. Right. There we go. It's really, it really comes down to how do you feel your body 
really great sex actually comes down to this. It's like, how are you actually feeling your body and how are you following your intuition, your inspiration and your impulses to lead you to the place of ecstatic bliss? And you actually cannot get there if you're not connected to your body. And we use the term mindfulness to talk about that idea of connected to your body. Justin, I love I, your face right now. You're like, <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking in, I'm taking that in. And it's so funny because in many ways, I think men are too mindful in that they develop erectile dysfunction. So I actually think that mindfulness in many ways is almost like the opposite. Overthinking, you mean. Because you're overthinking it, right? I mean, Kevin, how many guys do we see? I see at least like five a week who are under the age of 40 who have one event and they get stuck in their heads. And I would assume that that's, they're so aware of their penis or eating out of pussy or being able to penetrate or not being able to penetrate. So kind of the question then becomes like, what is the line of becoming being mindful and being inside your head? Right. Well, that's actually not being mindful. That's being lost in thought. Ah, Ooh, okay. so, so tell me the difference. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's very, um, there's a lot of places where we can get stuck in this, right? Like, oh, I'm being mindful and I'm, I'm feeling everything inside my body, but now I'm on a runaway train with my thoughts. So being mindful is being fully present. It's being here and being now. It's not lost in, uh-oh, is my cock going to work in five seconds? Uh-oh, I just lost my erection, all of these things. It's, it's really right in this moment what's happening. What is that, the sensation? Yeah, go ahead. That's a great point because I will tell you, Justin, a lot of the patients that we see, they do hone in on things in the past that mm -hmm. have happened, right? And 100%. so you're just like, it's like, oh, there's that one time I, I was trying to, to maintain an erection and it just went away. My mind was lost going somewhere else. Yeah. And now all future sexual encounters seem to go back to that time. They're not being present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the worry, the deep, deep fear and worry and concern, which I have a lot of empathy for. I work a lot with men for probably seven years straight. My primary focus was working with men around performance issues. And the level of anxiety that comes with the fear of I can't perform is profound. I mean, it, clients have been suicidal. I mean, this is very, it touches on a lot of deep places for many, many men about who they are, what their value is. and and it's really sucks when they get stuck in that anxiety loop and that. Yeah. I mean, to break it down, I mean, we always quote Robin Williams. He said, God gave man a brain and a penis and only enough blood to control one at a time. So when you, <laughs> right. have, when you have these problems and you're an anxious and you're thinking too much of what else is going on, you're not going to get it up because all that blood is rushing to your brain, your cortisol levels are spiking, you're not thinking about having sex, you're having anxiety, and you're physiologically just not able to do what you set out to do. But um, I normally say that's not sexy, yeah. right? Like if you're thinking about Ooh. whether or not you're hard, I'm like, that's it. no one's going to get hard under those circumstances because it's not sexy. But what about when people ask, are you hard? <laughs> right? Because your partner, sex. like if you're, oh, oh yeah, your partner yeah, asks. Yeah. Yes, I think that there is a specific, and this goes into what's called erotic blueprints. There are a specific type of people who like types of kinky play and may right. want to hear certain things, but that's an agreed upon play, right? We've agreed mm -hmm. that you're going to say those things to me. I've consented that that's sexy for me, which is very different than I struggle with performance issues and my partner is like, you're not hard yet. I mean, that's a shaming statement versus an intentional shaming statement, which would be part of an erotic play scene. <laughs> so Justin, we've had this conversation before, how communication is really important in the bedroom. So I think that's yeah. kind, of key, kind of one of the things that you're bringing up here, how, you know, communication is important now, you know, so how can we like kind of, you know, how, for one of our listeners who's like, all right, I want to improve my mindfulness in yes. the bedroom. Right. How can one go about practicing mindfulness to improve one's sexual health and overall well-being? Right. So I think one of the best overall tools is using your breath. 
And the formal term for using your breath would be using your breath as an anchor. So the breath anchors you into your body and it actually gives your busy brain that pumps out thoughts, just like your heart pumps blood. I mean, that's what the brain is supposed to do. <laughs> it gives right. it somewhere to go. And when we focus on our breath, and there's very specific types of breath you can do. There's erotic breath work. There's all these different ways you can send the breath into your body to feel sensations more fully, which is really what we're opening up here. That actually is the best portal into, I, I believe, what people need as the tools for these ecstatic states that everyone's clamoring for and wanting and deserving of. I will also add that. <laughs> Interesting. And, and, you know, obviously I think that the, this idea of this of breathing kind of calms you down, right? I mean, that's, that's, it's almost like a meditation or, or some kind of slowing you down. Um, but what other practices outside of that, right? Like there's got to be like talking to someone, is there like a, th like talking to someone like you, are there other kinds of, you know, things in the moment Cause sometimes, I mean, listen, most guys, they kind of start to shit the bed, right? Like mm -hmm. there's going to be a moment and it's hard to tell a lot of guys breathe because you tell me to breathe, I'm going to start freaking out. <laughs> yeah. No, so no, you've been holding your you. breath the whole time. Oh God, right? We're learning you a lot, lot about you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start going everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think that there, you're right there. It's, it's a, it is a, um, there's tools that we need going in. So the first step is breath and it's breathing in this way that allows you to connect with your body. Then it's reminding yourself to stay connected to the sensations. It's trusting that your partner or whoever you're sleeping with, whether that's a one night stand, that there is no hurry. And I think specifically for men, way more than women, there is this scarcity that they function out of, of like, this is my one chance and this is this moment now and I've got to get it. And they move 100%. sex along so quickly. And women actually don't want that. I mean, really, it's like the number one thing that couples in my office is like the woman is just like basically slow the fuck down overall right. in general. Right. So I think it's knowing that it's okay to slow down. That actually most I think that there's this idea that like passion or desire is quick. It can be. But if that is the only tool we go to, and if we move into passion and desire from a scarcity place, we're not going to be connected to our partner. We're not going to be able to feel them. We're not going to be in the feedback loop. We're not going to be able to feel our own bodies. We're just moving through the motions to try and get where we think we're supposed to go. And then we get to the end of it and we are like, what just happened? Because we weren't actually present for it. I love that because I feel like most guys, Justin, the test of this, it's like check boxes. We're hitting them. And we want to keep hitting these check boxes. Right. And some of that speed, you know, say personally, is because, yeah, you're afraid that, oh, I hit that check box. I'm not going to be maintained that check box. Right. Got to get to the next check box. And mm -hmm. our mind just kind of keeps going forward. So, yeah, I think taking breaths are important and, and kind of stepping back and just understanding from that perspective that you don't have to rush. I think I think it sounds like. You know, the goal should be pleasure, however that may be achieved, exactly. right? And I think that I agree with Kevin because I think a lot of guys in today's day and age, our goal is to get in, have a good time, get out, make sure our partner hopefully is having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then we're done. We're on to the next thing. It's mm -hmm. just kind of the the mindfulness that we lack in life translates yeah. into the bedroom in many ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, you know, it, it leaves so much on the table, you know, it's like we leave, there are these incredible moments where it doesn't matter if you've been with someone for 20 years or you've just met someone at the bar that evening where you can really connect and enjoy your bodies and pleasure and leave so many parts behind and just be in full pleasure. And I link it back a lot to also just the way our culture thinks about pleasure. There's a lot of shame in general, I think, in our culture. And I think men specifically have this unique challenge of they're conditioned to think it's okay to want sex and to have sex, but there's so much shame around masturbation and there's so much shame around really truly showing your desire. I mean, the work that I've done with men around desire, I used to run a workshop series called sex as meditation. Actually, it was a five mm -hmm. workshop series with a colleague 
and we did a desire, there was a whole part on desire. And oftentimes if you say to a man, like your desire is welcome here. I mean, what happened? I guess I'm curious what happens if I say that to either of you. I mean, <laughs> do you want to that respond? That sounds awesome. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Do you feel like it removes pressure and you really believe me? Like, or is there a little part of you that's like, maybe, or... I, I don't know. I think it depends on the person right. and the situation, obviously. But I I do think that that so sounds like a really nice thing. And <laughs> You're like, like, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, why, why not? Right? You thought like, about I that mean, a second a little more. You're like, oh, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think we've all been there where like, you know, when you're with a partner, sometimes it's just different. And I think sometimes you just feel more in the moment. And when right. you feel that mindfulness, yeah. sometimes it's like I've been, in, you know, you're talking and, and you just afterwards, you're like, that was different. And it felt different or better. And, it, it, and you look back and you can reflect and say like, I think I was like, kind of like really feeling it in that moment. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah, no, agree? I, agree with you. I agree. I agree. I agree. You know, I have one question for you, Keely. You know, it's so as Justin's one of his most favorite, you know, quotes to say is it takes two to tango, really. It takes right. two to tango. And I would say in our current day and age, it's hard to get two people in the same mindset to be present at the same time. Great point. So is there like, you know, let's let's maybe talk about a couple. Are there exercises, things that they can do <laughs> to kind of get in that mindset at the right time? You know, past guests have talked about like scheduling sex, making sure mm -hmm. like, hey, we, we got that kind of set up. Yeah. But is there, you know, any practices or anything that can be done? Yeah, I love scheduling sex. I think for busy couples, it's kind of, it sometimes has to be a necessity. And my thing with scheduling sex that I normally say is like, you scheduled sex when you first met. I mean, you really scheduled it. You're like, do you want, it's Friday. And you're like, do you want to go on a date next Thursday? I mean, that was like very scheduled, right? I mean, right, you, right. you took showers, you shaved, you picked out your outfit, you changed your outfit 10 times. You like had three places reserved for dinner. I mean, there is no part of the beginning of your relationship that was not scheduled for sex. Like, let's just be real. So I'm all sure. about scheduling sex. But I think in terms of how do we encourage people to turn towards being present and setting down the list of things we need to do and really choosing to be with each other in a couple, I, I do think it's a conversation of like, can we set this as our intention? Can we potentially revisit the intention with either a word or phrase? What do we do if we see our partner feel like they're disappearing? How do we call them back? Um, you know, there's all sorts of different techniques and tools like around eye contact or breathing together or certain types of touch or starting with your eyes closed and hands touching or touching hearts. I mean, there's endless ways, I think, to dro help drop our partner in. But it, it oftentimes, I believe, needs to be accompanied with a conversation around like, our intention is to really spend this time together. And it doesn't have to be, I think sometimes like the word mindfulness is not always the sexiest word. So it could just come with like, let's just really share this time, just us. Like, let's really make this like a special, my husband is French, so he uses the word souvenir. He says, let's make this a souvenir. So it's like this. Damn, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really shit. And I, and I love it. And I use it with clients all the time because I think there's something that feels so special about that. And really, truly, in these long term couples, sex is something that we do most people, unless you're in a non monogamous dynamic, but it's a unique thing to that partnership. It's something you don't do with anybody else. And even if you are in a non monogamous dynamic, that specific person in you have a very unique way of connecting that's very vulnerable. And again, even if it's just a, a one-time experience and you never see that person and again, you don't even know their name, there's still like this energy of like, this is this thing we're doing right now that is meant to be fun and meant to be pleasurable and can also take us into all of these wonderful places inside of ourselves. It's a great summary of that. It's a really great answer. And I think my next question really it goes back to the idea of mindfulness and how I think what you were almost saying with mindfulness being a word that may may not always be a good word for especially men to hear. 
Yeah. Now, I think there's a lot of skepticism with it when it comes to this idea of mindfulness where, you know, I, I think it is, is almost a trigger word. Like you're telling a guy to be mindful of what they're doing and they're like, I think about all this shit all the time and that's my problem. And we, we discussed that already with anxiety. But how do we, if you're a partner dealing with a guy who has actual, you know, who, who lacks mindfulness or really is struggling to develop that. Yeah. How can you approach someone with skepticism on, on mindfulness or a man to kind of help them overcome this problem? Because oftentimes they don't want to hear it. And it, sometimes it's hard for me to get through, for Kevin to get through. And we often send these guys to sex therapists, to people yep. like you, to get yep. that additional help. Right, right. You know, it sounds like we're talking a little bit about ego. We're talking a little bit about feedback. We're talking about Absolutely. potentially also trauma. You know, the blockers to being able to feel our bodies are often linked to um, our experiences in childhood and how we were given space to be ourselves or seen and valued. And so it really... When there is a, when I work with a client and there is resistance around the, the capacity, the ability or the willingness to go into mindfulness, I actually use it as a marker of like, oh, okay, let's back off because this person actually has a defense here to protect themselves. And it was set up for very, very good reason. And until there is enough safety in that, within that client to resource themselves, it, it, it sometimes actually, um, it's not always like someone's just being stubborn, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like there's sometimes really deep reason. underlying there's reasons reason. why it's difficult to go and feel your body or why you're cut off from your body or why it's so hard to put your phone down and be present. Or, you know, it is a, a big, big challenge for many, many people, partly patterned, I think, by our society where we're busy, busy, busy doing things all the time. Right. And it can also be an indication of deeper trauma. So you know, I, I always hold the space of if you're a partner trying to bring your partner, try, if you're dating someone or with someone, you're trying to bring them into your sexual world, the first thing we need is compassion. We have to come with compassion and we have to come with curiosity. It's not a forcing. It's not a pressuring. It's just, wow, that's really interesting. Um, tell me more, you know? For sure. Yeah, that's interesting. You talk about, so compassion and i will tell you you use that word for a lot of guys it's going to be hard for a lot of guys i would say <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, all right so i'm about to have a you know a, you know sexual experience i'm going to bring some compassion there I, some mm -hmm. guys that kind of tuned that out right justin maybe oh yeah oh yeah for sure so you know it, it, what strategy is there you know what, you know what, what approach is there for, for guys yeah, it's probably pretty rare if I was talking to a guy about getting ready to go fuck that I'd be like, we need to bring compassion. Unless specifically, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> unless specifically I'm also working with their partner or there's something that's happening. Well, actually, it's very relevant for people who struggle with um, performance anxiety. They have to have compassion for themselves first and foremost. Yes. But I think of compassion really as like having your heart open. It's like your heart is open to be touched in whatever way is there. It doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. It doesn't mean you're just submissive, but it's that your heart is actually available to feel mm -hmm. in that moment. And yeah, I agree. Compassion is a tricky word. And I think if you're going into every sexual experience and your heart is closed, you are going to be very, very, very limited in what you're actually going to be able to experience. Yes, a hundred percent. And it's so, it's so interesting, like just because of how I think a lot of people in today's society have a transactional relationship with almost everything. And my question is like, and, and I, I kind of feel like I'm alluding to it is, you know, how has our lifestyles and maybe it's this, you said being on our phones transactional quick things everything's fast we need gratification quick now dopamine fires right how has that translated into this lack of mild mindfulness how do you think this has impacted 
not only men's sex lives, potentially our partners as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're really missing, I think it's called the gray space. Don't quote me on that, but we're really missing the space in our lives where we're not doing anything. Like you used to go to the grocery store and there was like two checkout lines and you would just stand there for 20 minutes. And you may that's or may not hell. be close. That's that's horrible. I hate that. <laughs> really? I mean, oh, no, I don't want to say that anywhere. For 20 minutes. <laughs> and but in that, in our worlds where things were not as efficient, we just had this space where nothing was happening, and we were just in our thoughts. And I think it was Roosevelt too who said, you know, every day he would take fifteen minutes to just sit and do nothing, and just think really just think and be with himself. And that is different than mindfulness because that's sort of like working on something. Mindfulness is just being in the present moment. But I think it's torture for some people. I think the addiction to the dopamine, the addiction to our busy lives, the also the feeling like everything is supposed to, I'm never supposed to hurt. I'm never supposed to experience suffering. I'm never supposed, to, I, I don't know, actually know how to integrate emotions. Traditionally, men are not really taught to have big, how to have big emotions. You know, it's man up, don't cry, boys don't cry, all of these things. And so, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate because we do actually need help to learn how to digest big emotions. We truly do. And men don't get that type of training. I think many young boys are now, you know, raising a young boy I, now, I see it at the playgrounds. And no one is saying boys don't cry. I mean, I'm in San Francisco, so it's slightly different. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> but I think it's changing. I think people are, are starting to help um, understand that children just need help in general, learning how to feel emotions. And that's truly what most of all therapy is, is just helping people learn to feel themselves. And if we can't feel ourselves, then we can't be mindful. So those two things are hand in hand most of the time. Keely, you covered some great stuff in that summary right there. I'll tell you some <laughs> things that I've been personally work, trying to work on myself in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, I try to meditate now, like just a little bit in the morning. And I can tell you, yeah, those like 10 minutes where I'm just with my own thoughts, man, frightening, frightening for myself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Right, I thought you were going to say it was great. Do you get stuck no, in a loop? It's, it's, do you get stuck in a loop though. or where do you? No, no, I, do you, would it's you kind of, no, it's hard. And I also just keep getting this poor, like, ah, I kind of want to check my phone. I keep mm. wanting to check my phone. Mm. I want to, you know, it's it's yeah. difficult to n uh, not be doing something, right? Um, you know, for a set time. Right. Uh, but interestingly, you know, it, Justin, you may have come across this like on Twitter where they were showing like, hey, there's footage from like a frat party back in like the 90s where like zero people had cell phones. Right. Everyone's interacting with each mm -hmm. other. Everyone's like talking to each other straight to the face. Right. No one, everyone's just enjoying themselves mm -hmm. and being very present in the moment. And, you know, kind of what you're mentioning about the gray matter or those times where we're not, we're not like kind of, you know, logged into like one of our devices or something like that. I feel like a lot of those times are gone. Yeah. I think about that too often. Yeah, I also grew up in. I'm I'm old enough to have grown up, gone through high school without cell phones, and uh, I think about that also. And you know, we're talking about something really interesting too here. So in in regards to sex, like we are either giving or doing onto our partner, or we're receiving. Intercourse is some combination of like sometimes it's this equal piece. But in many ways, we're giving and we're receiving. There's this back and forth that happens in sex. And when we're doing, I think we're, it's what we're, we're doing things on our phone. We're doing scrolling the internet. We're doing going to work. I mean, there's this busyness that happens. And for really incredible sex that changes your life, you have to be able to receive. And we talked about this a little bit with men early on of like men have this checklist that they have to go through. And this this pertains to women, too. This is not just a men's piece. I mean, this is a society's piece of like the act of receiving is an act of non-doing. And to be able Very to. Very interesting. Right. <laughs> and so being able to receive touch, being able to really feel your partner's lips on your cock and to feel like you can just receive that is something a lot of people don't ever learn how to do. And then- That's a great point. I mean, like literally I've had patients come up to me. I've read it online. They're like, I don't like, like some guys are like, at this point, they're like, I don't like blowjobs yeah. longer than 10 minutes because I just don't know what to do. Like I, right. can't, I can't even stay in the moment. Yeah. 
And they're like, am I supposed to touch her? Am I supposed to like do something with my hands? Like it's actually true. Yeah. 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 And it, it's very, it, and this isn't, I don't think just necessarily like at our times as an issue. I mean, receiving is something that's talked about in uh, many ways. It, it just is a more difficult, truly more difficult experience. And when we talk about sex, when we talk about really truly enjoying your sex life, really truly enjoying sexual moments, that receiving is a huge part. Huge. So what are, what are, you know, so we're talking about receiving and then, you know, being open to it. Let's talk, are, are there exercises that guys can kind of do to try to make themselves better to, to, to being open to receiving? <laughs> better at receiving. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do more of it. <laughs> you know, I think that there can be, again, there, there needs to be an introspection, I think, on some level of somebody reflecting like what happens when I receive and what, why is it so hard for me? What has happened in the past or what's been my experience as a child? What did I learn? What did I see? All, all of these pieces I think is really important to understand your own psychology and relationship potentially emotionally and your, your way that your somatic body interprets receiving and I think that there's also this bit of just reminding yourself, like, it's okay. It's okay to be 10 minutes into a blowjob and it's okay to not know what to do. Can you feel your body? Again, this goes back to the breath. Can you feel your body? Can you feel the sensations? And can you trust your impulses? Like, is the, I mean, my, my comment to your client who asked Justin, like, what do I do with my hands? It's like, what did you want to do with your hands? That's a great point. It's a great point. I like that. Oh. I mean, I think I think a lot of this mindfulness and this idea of receiving comes to this concept of losing control and submissive, it's being to some, some like being a little bit submissive in some ways to your to your to what you want to the moment and potentially your partner. I'm not saying you're submissive and you're doing whatever you want to do, but I think for a lot of guys to give up control of a certain situation or to think about losing control and just being in the moment is very difficult. Um, I think we try to control, we try to micromanage. We're always doing all these little things. And when we come to a part where someone says, just let it go. I think it, there is this aspect of it that can be very difficult for a lot of men. Right. The question of, will you truly accept me if I fully let go? Can I trust right. myself? Can I trust my impulses? Can I trust that my impulses are going to be what you want? If I'm not tracking you every second to make sure that I'm doing it right. And I move into what I really want and my impulses, are you going to stay with me? Again, this is kind of the heart opening too, because your heart has to be open to truly be able to do that. And now you're more vulnerable and now you're putting yourself on the line, which is ultimately what makes these moments superior to the other moments is that they right, have more right. meaning and they do, they have a much bigger risk. And I think when we start to use the word submissive, we run into a space where men who tend to be more dominant may avoid moving this, but I, I right. think it's more like, can you listen to yourself? And go with like, what, what do you really feel from the inside and trust that you can follow those impulses? Cause you may be, you may turn out that you are submissive, but it may also turn out that you're much more dominant than you thought. And that suddenly now you're saying things like get on all fours and put your ass in the air. And you never thought those words would come out of your mouth. You know, I mean, who knows what's in there really? Lots of great things come out actually truly when the mindfulness Lots is there. <laughs> Lots of fun. There's lots of fun in there. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. I'm trying to think if we have any more questions. Kevin, you have any more questions? I mean, this has been really, really insightful. I've really enjoyed this conversation. No, I, I want to say, Keely, your voice is amazing. Like this whole time that you've been talking, I don't know. I've just been like... I, I don't know. It's, it's just... I'm incredibly relaxed, even though yes. this is a very stimulating <laughs> conversation. 
<laughs> like your voice is very, very it's reassuring. Amazing. It's very calming. Yeah. Oh. I feel very confident talking with you. Yeah. I have to tell you, it's oh, you. it's a very, very important, very cool skill that you have. Trait, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, are, do you have any uh, concluding remarks on you know mindfulness? And, and sexual experiences for men. Yeah, I think that the main thing that I would really want to push to or say is like, this is not just a try it on once and if it doesn't work, like yeah. push it away. Like this is actually a very, um, it's an ongoing practice and you can come back to it at any point. And you may get excited listening to us talk about this here and like suddenly start ordering all these mindfulness books and like going down this rabbit hole. And then you pull out for no pun intended, um, you know, <laughs> a couple of years, you can always come back to it. And I, and I, you know, what's true about this path of opening that I think also makes it more complex is it's, it's not as quick as Viagra or a sex toy and the process to being able to become present is, is multifaceted and a journey in and of itself. And when we bring it into the complexity of sex, we really want to give that space and time without any expectations and just sort of see what happens. Like I'd say like set a goal for three years and check in with yourself. Not like I'm going to do this next week with my girlfriend and see if it makes things better because then we're setting ourselves up for failure. And I think it's hard to talk about that in this modern day society because we do want things to be quick. We're going to go see a doctor and we want him to fix us, fix me. And this piece that we're talking about here, it's a, it is such an important investment in yourself and such an important investment in your sexuality and whomever you're partnered with or choose to partner with or whomever you're having sex with. And it, it just takes, it will take some time to understand what it means to feel your body, to understand what it means to be connected with your cock, to understand how to follow impulses. These things will take time to build and learn. So I guess that's the last piece I want to end with. I don't know if it's a downer or an upper, but. <laughs> I think it's the reality. I think it's, you know, if you're going to do something, you got to do it right. You know, it, it, it takes time. Right. right. Rome wasn't Work built in it. a day. And if, you know, you don't want to be on medications, if you don't want Viagra, you don't want to see else, or if you want to use that in addition to this, you know, this is going to just make you enjoy sex more right. at the end of the day, right? Like it's going to improve your, your experience. If you love sex now, you might love sex even more being more mindful, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. um, now, now Keely, tell our listeners where they can find you uh, both, you know, your with, with what you do and, you know, on socials, tell, tell our listeners mm -hmm. more because this yes. was fantastic. Yes. Yes. I would love to have everyone come listen to me. So the best way to find me on social media is through Instagram and it's my name, Keely Rankin Intimacy Coach. And you can also head over to my website, which is keelyrankin.com. And I have a course for men who struggle with early ejaculation. And we're also just to, about to launch. We just filmed a new course called Keely Sex Class, which I'm really excited about. We have one whole module actually all about this erotic embodiment and mindfulness piece. It's a part of this whole structure that I set up for everybody to have better sex. So I hope you guys check it out. That's wonderful. I think that's, I'm sure it's going to be an excellent course. And thank you so much for coming on. Uh, this was really great. As always, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, check out the site. Check out our uh, socials the, at the Man Up Pod on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can always follow us on YouTube and subscribe there and see all of our beautiful faces as we, we discussed all this stuff. And always subscribe to our, our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon. So thanks for, for Kevin and Keely. Thanks for listening. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.